So when people call out gaslighting, same as projecting, I go, stop it. But of course, me arguing and saying, no, I absolutely will defend my profession and the use of terms being used properly got me kicked from the group. But this started off with the same thing. It was a person who is a different type of trans person than myself declaring there was harm being done. And I'm going to be honest, bullshit. Show me. Show me where the harm is. So I don't know how to start this off other than to say that there's something that happened to me online and I wanted to share it and it connects to a larger issue. So for those who pay attention to the channel, um, we recently had a discussion with uh, a really cool person by the name of Kat, who is one of the mods on the subreddit r slash tra, which is the one that on there that's r slash trans with lots of A's and N's. Mm -hmm. So... One of the things that me and Zena have been digging into since that video is trying to understand this phenomenon more, where these, there's these clashes between transmasculine and trans femme people. And what are the nature of those? And right now, what we're trying to do is dig that up. So we can't really go into a ton of what we found, but we can talk a little bit about it. But there's a very real world example of how this, this impacted me, and I wanted to share it. So do we want to talk about like the general stuff first, and then go into the, the example? Uh, let's go into your example first and see where we go from there. Sure. So... I was on r slash tra, giving it another shot. I hadn't joined. I just posted something. And I posted a meme that was a little risque, a little, little fun, good stuff. And it was getting a lot of upvotes. It was getting a lot of good stuff. It was really nice stuff. And you had trans mass people on there. You had... Um, people looked like they were struggling with connection on there. Yeah, there a lot know. of people. And I'll show you that. Let me show you the meme. Let me show you the meme. So you guys understand what's up. So this is the meme that I shared. And considering the number of trans girls I've been flirting with lately, I feel this deep in the cockles of my soul. So let me be really clear. Like, this is the thing that you see a lot in the trans community is like, you'll be online, you'll meet someone really cute. And like, and then you find out they're on the opposite fucking part of the continent. Um, or they're not even on the same now, continent. Let's be real here. Yeah, right. So event, all I could think about is that one story about the lesbian who like literally sailed from Russia to Canada to go, to go live with her girlfriend. Oh, God. that story was amazing. Um, but this video, this, this picture got removed needless to say, cause it's a little risque, right? Right. And so what happened was, is I posted this as a troll, as a fun thing. And what ended up happening was, is way down deep in the comments. Yeah, way deep, way up in the co like the cockles in the in the in the the inner depths of the the thing. It there was a request. There was a request, and someone said, "Next time, can you please make this a spoiler so that people who are trans mask don't have to see this because it it it, it, it creates dysphoria." Well, I think it was this this framed as anything that calls the viewer a girl right yeah and girls who are you or assumes yeah so this really struck me as weird because if you look at the meme that i just showed you what it says is girls who are you and yet there were tons of trans mass people in r slash tra that were like just doing the two seconds of mental gymnastics to not get offended like they just literally were like yeah, I'm really in love with this girl, and she's, like, literally over in Florida, and I'm in, like, Washington State, and it sucks. And so there's some, you know, or somebody going, hey, you know, let me share about my boyfriend on another continent. You know, same deal. Yeah. And I got into an argument with this person, because I was literally like, you know, I'm sorry that offended you, but spoiler tags, in my opinion, are for either risque or not safe for work material, or for genuinely... Per not promoting spoilers, right, to movies, things like that. Or things involving, you know, violence of some kind. Right? To me, it seems a bit asinine to have to, you know, censor this thing. And it's not really censorship. Better way to say this, there's, it doesn't really make sense to me to restrict this thing. Because my assumption as an adult woman is that you can do the mental gymnastics very quickly. 
the person's response when I said, you know, said what I said is that they basically said something to the effect of, you know, it creates dysphoria. And part of this really got under my skin because the issue was, I'll admit, and this is going to sound bitchy, that's not my problem. R slash tra is a massive subreddit that has shit posts and has it's it's literally just made to do trans memes. There are going to be memes that pass through there that are just not going to be applicable to everybody. There are trans mask memes. Hell, we found IRL trans ma uh, trans man or trans mask. Trans mask IRL. Yeah, trans mask IRL. And that subreddit is a great. It's got some really good memes. Do any of them feel at all relevant to me? No. Are they still funny? Yes. Well, and just still follow stuff that, you know, even if it's interesting to me, right? Because we share memes constantly. That's what we do. So this idea that, like, someone can't do this leap was really weird to me. Where I really struggle with this whole discussion is that there is this assumption by some folks, and I don't know if this is just that subreddit, but I've seen it in other things too, where we're supposed to account for every person's dysphoria and have to do a lot of mental gymnastics to try to get to what might affect them. And I don't understand why. Because I'm all about reducing harm. But what happened with that person on r slash straw wasn't harm. I didn't harm them. That meme does no harm. You can make an argument that, you know, they're two girls that are clearly from like an anime and everybody in anime is in high school. That could be something that could bother people, except I've seen that meme used in every other place. That meme has been used in r slash actually lesbians. Right? Or mm -hmm. it's been used in, um, uh, what is it? Um, still cis? What is it? Or cis, uh, oh wait, uh, Egg IRL, that one. Oh, yeah. No, I see this one everywhere. I don't even, I can't even tell you how many subreddits I find it in. So, yeah, the idea is, is that, like, okay, I could see someone getting maybe offended by this from one perspective. But, again, I'm assuming people are adults and can read into the actual context in that and not, like, just lose their shit. And... There was this big insistence to try to make me feel like accountable for this person's dysphoria, but I'm not. I'm legitimately not. If this person feels silenced, like their response to me was like, this is why trans mass people don't speak up in the sub because they get shut down. It's like, I'm not shutting you down. I heard you out. I'm responding. I just don't, I don't agree with you. No one is shutting you down. Your comment was not deleted. I challenged you. And this is what really bothers me, because one of the books we're reading for the book club, which we've been behind on for a while now, is Conflict is Not Abuse. And I want to talk about this because to some degree, I really have to be super clear that this stuff starts to really bother me, because it starts to feel like what's happening is, is that I'm supposed to make expectations for a group of people I'm not a part of. And while there are some levels to which I'm willing to do that, there's a level to which I actually think that's fundamentally impossible. This actually happened in another scenario. I was recently part of a group of people on Twitter who were seemingly nice, but I barely interacted with because I couldn't keep up with the chat, and apparently I worked. Um, but the joke was is that there was a person there that I believe was transmasculine, um, or at least non-binary, who lost their collective shit. They were upset because the trans femmes in there got more more um, either notice or acclaim or people paid attention to them. I don't know the exact context because I came into it late. This person claimed they were being gaslit about a certain memory or situation, to which I said, based on the specific situation mentioned and what they were disagreeing with, that's not gaslighting. Because if you've watched our gaslighting video, gaslighting is actually a very horrific thing to do to people that usually requires either parents, cult leaders, or people in power to use the yo-yoing tactics of like love bombing with completely disintegrating your sense of self. So to call difference of memory and arguing your positions gatekeeping bugs me. Apparently that was not the right thing to do. And what happened was, is it caused the situation to further degrade because then I was challenging somebody on something that was related to this, to which people then got mad at me and said, you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, like, yes, it does. This is a clinical word. This is literally my profession. No. 
what ended up happening was, is I got kicked out of the group, which was sad because I feel like I might have done it bad to the person who invited me to it. Oh, I had a word slip there. Yes, I mean gaslight in this situation. If I said gatekeep at one point, I apologize. Gaslight, although they all are related to girl bosses. Uh, the thing is, is that. My problem is, is I just I realize something that's been bothering me for a long time and why when leftists use the term gaslight, why it bothers me. When people throw out gaslighting needlessly. Without actually understanding the severity of that word, instead of just calling what the person's doing, what it is, they're being manipulative or they're being op uh, uh, oppositional or they're being crappy. Instead of actually just calling them out for the thing, you use this term that is incredibly loaded. To win the argument. Well, and and to be clear, like the the accusation of gaslighting is also an accusation of like abuse, right? Yeah, it's like, it's, it's, it's absolutely that. Not to mention, there are narcissists I've had in my office. I've only ever worked with one, and it scared the shit out of me. But there's been a narcissist. The, the narcissist in my office, literally, I saw do this, and like. The way they did it was declaring they were being gaslit. So there's ways that that claim sometimes could be either manipulative in the sense that it's an emotional appeal because everyone suddenly, you know, their their cockles go up and they go, sh you know, their ears go up. They're like, oh, God, something terrible is happening. Or this can be out and out a form of manipulation. For those who don't know what gaslighting is, gaslighting is a technique that is used in many situations to manipulate another person by getting them to actually question their own sense of self and their own perception, uh, perception of, of reality. Perceptions, realities, memories. The yeah. core thing that most people miss is they think that a disagreement of memory is gaslighting. It's not. And that the reason for that is twofold. You watch our video on it, we talk more about it, but the major reasons are one, it's not over a long period of time. And so that's one factor because gaslighting takes time. You can't just make someone question their whole reality. But two, it starts off with being incredibly positive. This is usually done in the form of love bombing. And yeah, it has to be to some degree intentional. Love bombing is a term we get from cults. It's when you have the new person come into the cult and you're like, oh, you're great. You're so smart. You're lovely. And everyone pays attention to them. They get a ton of positive, uh, positive interaction. And the moment they say something against the cult, everyone pulls back and gets cold. This is a social psychological technique to manipulate the person to not go against the group. You're actively making the person feel social deprivation as a means by which to control them. Gaslighting is just the next logical step. So when people call out gaslighting, same as projecting, I go, stop it. But of course, me arguing and saying, no, I absolutely will defend my profession and the use of terms being used properly got me kicked from the group. But this started off with the same thing. It was a person who is a different type of trans person than myself declaring there was harm being done. And I'm going to be honest, bullshit. Show me. Show me where the harm is. Because this is the thing I'm getting sick of in a lot of like queer spaces is there's a tendency to call something harm when what you really mean is you're offended. And I don't mean offended in the same way conservatives do where they're like, you're just offended, snowflake. No, what I mean by that is, is that people do not understand the difference between abuse slash harm and discomfort. Something can make you uncomfortable and not be harmful. You might be uncomfortable if you have severe dysphoria to see that meme because it refers to you as a girl. And if you're a trans mass person with a lot of dysphoria, that can be really hard. I empathize. But the problem is, is that. Oh, Sophia Fletcher. Hey, long time no see. Missed you. Hi. Um. Yeah. Also, pros right renegade. Hi. Um, but the thing here is, is that to say that that's me attempting to do harm, I think this is reductive of harm. Like, one of the things that was said before I got kicked out of the group, I'm going to make fun of it never endingly. Because I'm an absolute douche. And this is, I was literally told that my behavior was unprofessional. To which I said, they're not my client. I don't have to be professional towards them when all I'm doing is reciting stuff from my masters. 
This has nothing to do with my license. This has nothing to do with me being a counselor. This has to do with my education. I just say therapist is shorthand because they all go together. But the fact of the matter is, is that when you sit there and tell me I'm being unprofessional in a personal setting, you have given up the argument. You have now told me that you don't actually want to have an argument. What you want to do is try to shut it down because you have a projection of the way therapists should work, act and work. That's manipulative. So the reason I'm bringing all this up is that these are two separate scenarios in one fucking week where I go, why? Why is there suddenly this jump to you're harming me instead of just going, that makes me uncomfortable and just owning it. And I can say I'm sorry and I can try to do better in the future. But this idea that I'm doing harm, no, I'm going to push fucking back on that. Well, I think kind of sours the well, right? No, it's absolutely a poisoning of the well. Yeah. Because you immediately assume I'm doing that, which means I'm on the defensive and going, but I'm not trying to hurt you. What you're saying is hurt is not. And the problem is at that point, I can't tell if the person is saying that in good faith or not. And in most cases, I'm going to be honest, I don't think they are. Well, and if in the scenario where you just admit you're uncomfortable, it is so much easier to go, okay, what is there something that you need in here, right? Or is there some way, you know, something that would help? Or if you're like, you know, I could really use some validation for this part of me right now. Cool. Ask people that. It is way easier to, to just be like, yeah. Yeah, let's 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 validate it. Let's, you know, see what we can do to address that than it is to make this about manipulation instead. Yeah. Niana said something really important. Folks can end up incredibly reactive in spaces where they think they are meant to be safe. Safe does not necess necessarily mean never experiencing discomfort. Yeah. Our server is a safe space. But does that mean you're never going to experience discomfort? No. Discomfort's part of life. I'm a fucking Zen Buddhist. Like, I, like, discomfort is literally the practice of meditation. It's learning to sit with discomfort. Past all the spiritual states and all that shit, whether you believe in them or not, it's learning to sit with discomfort and not give in to your baser instincts. Instead of scratching your nose, what would it be like to just let it itch and experience that for what it is without judgment, without any kind of positive or negative framing? Discomfort is not bad. Discomfort is only bad when it becomes so severe that it crosses boundaries. This is why when we talk about things in therapy, what you're trying to do is get people uncomfortable enough sometimes to not cross a boundary, but sometimes, especially with hard-headed people, you want to get them to that edge, the edge of where they feel uncomfortable, and then go a little bit further to their edge, not to the point where you're breaking a boundary or you're hurting anyone, but to the point where you're able to get them into a new level of being able to be uncomfortable. This is literally what therapy is. You're working with somebody to get them to be able to sit with the discomfort so they can face the feelings they haven't yet from their trauma or whatever they've gone through. What this comes back to with the larger question is, and I'm not trying to pick on trans mask people. Um, I mean, I, I have examples of yeah. like trans, I'm just to even this out. Cause yeah, please, please. I, I, I'm just saying this is that this is the stuff that I'm seeing in response to the stuff that we were reported to by Kat. And from what me and Zena can find, this is an ongoing debate. Reddit is just one location it happened. Uh, go ahead, Zena. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, I mean, we're, part of this is that we don't want to throw anyone under the bus either. I've also seen some weirdness where, like, on our slash actual lesbians, there's a story where... Oh, God. You know, a cis lesbian, you know, went to the doctor, and I think it was, like, a gynecologist or something, and, like, the doctor didn't understand that, like, they were like, no, really, I don't need a pregnancy test. Like, I I'm, bang I'm, girls. I'm in a lesbian relationship here. I really, really don't need it. Okay. Um, you know, and, and sure enough, in the comments, there's, you know, a, a trans woman who was getting, like, really dysphoric and really upset that, like, the, the person, like, didn't include trans women in this story somehow or didn't, like, use inclusive language and was like, but no, some people, like, have these parts and, like, tried to address it and it just didn't really go over well with this person um but it really was a weird one because i'm like no like this is a cis lesbian and a cis lesbian relationship like they can have their fucking awkward doctor stories like you've got a doctor not getting the context of what's going on it's kind of awkward right um yeah i don't know why i as a trans woman i never understood the whole like being uncomfortable with, with like, cis women sharing things or cis women or, or trans mask people or whomever 
sharing like stuff going on with their body. Because I feel like that just gets into more of the shaming of like the function of vaginas. We've talked about this before where like, like we celebrate girl dick, but do we really celebrate boy pussy? Right, right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, there's some very weird ways that society comes at shit. Um, you know, and, and at least in that scenario, like I've got some funny, awkward doctor stories that I, I do have them. <laughs> um, you know, at this point in my life, um, you know, handling the, hey, I, there is a chance that I could get pregnant and here's why. Like, no, my doctors all know at this point and it's kind of, you know, just par for the course. But again, that's unique to me. That doesn't invalidate this other person's story at all. Like, they totally can go share their awkward doctor story. Like, they happen. Like, I would rather have people share that stuff. Um, True. So, yeah. So, the, this, well, and it's this overstatement of harm. Right, that we're really trying to get at and examine, I think. Um, and and part of this too is that the thing that we're keeping an eye on is is why is there there are parts of the community that are like can be really validating, you know, to the other side, like trans mask and trans femme, so it can be really validating to each other. And there are other people where this goes toxic real fast and just looks ugly and gross and is very hard to read through. We read through a lot of those comments. Um, and so we're not like we're trying to figure out where some of that stuff is coming from, because we can't tell how much of this is like people in the community slinging trauma around or getting reactive. Right. Or is some of this actually, you know, MRAs or TERPs or other people, you know, infiltrating the community? Because, yes, that actually happens. I know it, it feels like I'm in a spy movie to say infiltrating. But legit, like I've I just read a website with an MRA trans person. Okay? That it does exist. Like it's it, it really is a weird. Thing. Like I've got this whole vlog on it. Or well, and it was like all the, blog, all, sorry, the, all, the all the trans there was trans women they were reporting on in R slash tra that were like they're former they were former Nazis or they were like, you know, my Nazi phase. And like I'm like Oh yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. okay, I I'm not gonna ever shame anyone for like, you know, getting better, right? Like if someone used to be like alt right and then left it, that's that's good. They left the alt right. But to be like my Nazi phase of the like, I feel like you've kind of lost the plot. Like, I feel like that shouldn't be a thing that should just be like, just thrown out there in that way. That feels weird. Much more, much similarly to the MRA trans mask folk. Like that's, if you can justify being trans mask and being an MRA, you have lost the plot. I mean, we say this about Blair White all the time. How can you be both? an absolutely gut-wrenching conservative and a trans woman because she's lost the plot. Yeah, yeah. Um, slinging trauma around, yes. Uh, there will... I am working on putting something together for that, so is just as, as well. We've been trying to research that one for a while. Um, but that one will probably be a little bit more scripted and, and have some data with it. There's um, a lot... Of, so, yeah. The, there's the, a lot there that ooh. we don't want to... We want to be careful when we talk about that one. To make it um, clear, it's a threading the needle issue because the problem is we don't want to alienate any trans femmes or trans masks in our community because the goal here isn't to blame one side or hurt anybody. The goal is to understand exactly why people are experiencing what they're experiencing. Yeah, or why sometimes things feel very reactive, right? Um, and and hopefully provide ways, hopefully, you know, talk about some ways to heal from some of that, right? Um, you know, it's, it is rough because Jess and I, trans femme, trans mask, okay, and so seeing these arguments erupt, um, is really weird because Jess and I do have slightly different communities that have slightly different needs, right? Like, that's just how it is, okay? The things that are going to make my masculine parts, um, you know, euphoric may not be the same as what makes Jess feel feminine and euphoric from that. Um, and so we can validate each other as much as we can, but also sometimes we feel the need for communities that just kind of get what we're going through. Um, and so watching that infighting really messes with us. Well, and I'll be really honest, like if I can be like a little candid for a moment here, like it really fucked with me and Xena. Like we literally, we kind of like had a moment where we were, we were starting to have like arguments about some of this stuff because obviously we had the perspective of, of our, res our, our respective group. And we actually had to step back from being like, wait, 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 we're getting pulled into this. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and 
you know, if one person's bringing up trauma, right? And then you're like, but I also have that trauma, just not the same format. Okay, it gets it starts getting really, really messy. Um, you know, I can't, and I don't want to ever say that like one trauma is worse than the other. It's not. They're different, and they function differently. Um, and it makes these arguments really hard. I actually think when we call out TERFs, I think we got to call out both um, that they want to harm trans women and ignore trans men. I think we got to call it out that way because I think they do both really well. And I think we got to call them out for that. That's all. I was just thinking about that. Yeah. Um, you know, so, so yeah, it's just some of the stuff has just been really weird lately. Well, and I guess the thing is, is the reason I tell these stories is not to throw anyone in the bus. Obviously, I'm not going to use any names or any issues, but I'm just going to make it really clear. I don't like infighting. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Thanks. Mm-hmm. I hate it. To me, the biggest issue of infighting within the community is that we find these divisions and they get they can be they can be used against us. Absolutely. Yeah. You don't think that turfs won't use that against us? Like, they super will. They super will prey upon people, um, you know, who don't have support, right? Or who don't have a larger community to help them actually learn solid information to help them. They will absolutely prey on those people. Well, let me give you a good example. We know alt writers will make sock accounts. Sometimes just to, you know, talk shit and be transphobic Mm -hmm. and then be blocked. But we also know that... They will also make little pit crew avatar pictures and will pretend to be trans to help help engage in those sever those 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 ways of severing things. A really good example of this is we've seen that on Twitter with like contrapoints with contrapoints where we you know how do you tell the difference between a real Mm -hmm. super queer person with a pit crew avatar and a alt writer with a pit crew avatar? You don't. And so the problem is is that you get into this issue where. These people posting, like, I still have never seen screenshots about the things that supposedly trans women sent to trans mask people. That's a little weird to me. I also don't know if there's screenshots of the specific trans men who started, or trans mask people, that started the 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 the, the train of, you know, trans femmes kind of suck, don't they? Because the problem is, is that it is entirely possible that those groups might legitimately have members that are bad faith actors trying to sow seeds of dissent. Well, and it would be very easy for some a bad faith actor to come in on somebody making a critique of the community, right, and come in and make that situation worse. You know, again, further alienating people. You know, I mean, that's, that's a very real possibility. So. Yeah. So again, our point here is not in any way we're trying to like, throw anyone under the bus. We're not trying to make any group responsible. What we're trying to do is understand a phenomenon because it doesn't make sense. There's no reason members of the trans community should be at each other's throats. Trans mass and trans femmes have no reason to dislike each other. Yet we saw a number of trans men sign a letter that included Buck Angel throwing trans women under the bus for their incredibly you know, oh, no, that was extreme, oh, gosh, yeah, yeah. extreme variations of gender stuff. Like it was literally like, how do you do sexism, but with extra steps? Like, well, and we gotta blame the right people, okay? Like, I don't need to go blame, you know, Janet Mock or Laverne Cox or those people for being prominent trans women in the media. I don't. I don't need to blame them for the times when I don't see a whole lot of trans men. That's them not their still fault. Good. Yes, absolutely. Them being there is still good. They do good work. God, I have Janet Mock's book, okay? Like, it is. There is media and larger society stuff to rage against that is actually responsible for the shitty treatment I got, right? Like, we gotta figure out where to actually, like, point the rage and, not the rage, but the anger, okay? The anger and actually how to deal with that. Because it can't just keep getting pointed at random people. Like, reacting to, and, and if you do overreact on the internet, okay? Please, like, like, try and call it out. Like, try and, like, check yourself at some point and apologize. Like, if that's you. And I don't, I don't need apologies for Jess's, okay? This is just Xena's internal. Okay? Trying to own the stuff the best you can is absolutely a great way to heal from things going on. All right? We're never going to turn down. At least on our end, okay? Our values are no. If somebody's really trying to make amends, like, awesome. 
Um, let me be real here. Jess and I have both actually got some reactive about things before. We really, really have. It it happens. Um, yeah. So, so, so I just say this very clear, mm -hmm. clearly. Again, no harm, no foul to any particular group. I'm not trying to. But again, our channel and our Discord, the ent the the, the entity or brand, whatever you want to call it, that exists as Zena and I making something. Mm -hmm. One of our clear values, and we've talked about this, why values matter, is inclusivity. I would rather take a xenogender person at their word than not, because the that me being wrong in that situation leads to gatekeeping someone who's part of the trans community. Me being wrong about including someone who's not really trans does nothing. It has no real effect. People can sit there and pretend it's harmful, but we come back to the difference between offense and harm. You're just doing the stolen valor thing. Like, this is very simple. It's the same thing with plural folks. I don't fully understand plural people yet. I'm learning about this. But the simple fact of the matter is, is I'm going to be inviting and inclusive to them into our community. Why? Same thing. Same thing with autistic people. Same thing with other neurodivergent people. Same thing with whatever group. As long as your, your group doesn't hurt people like maps or other crap like that. I'm going to be inclusive to people. That's simple that POCs, any form of trans non-binary, any of it, any of it. Because we only we only survive if we all work together. That's the end. So that's my final thought on it. Do you have anything else you want to add? Um, I've got a little bit here. Um, Go ahead. You know, Sophia Fletcher, you've got, um, I'm not super fond of our hypervisibility either. Makes sense. Um, and no, because it means we get the most shit. We've talked about this before. Well, and so. It's not where I was going. But, Sorry, I interrupted. My apologies. Um, I can see a perspective and, and share that where there is a, okay, but we don't have visibility either right we don't even have that we don't even get that and i want to be careful with that line of thinking if that's the feeling coming up for you um because eventually that will be us and this thing with that visibility really isn't that different okay it might be happening at a different scale in a different time period okay um but i don't want to attack that visibility you know either from a place of jealousy or a place of feeling like silenced. Okay. I want to, that nuance there, right. Acknowledging that this is not the state things are in right now, but this is the state that maybe other people are in and there are some pitfalls there. Okay. And that the way society treats both groups is kind of crappy at times. All right. Well, it's also reductive when we think about it. It's super it, reductive, but right? I want to hold that nuance as best I can. Okay. And that's, I think the thing that we're trying to get across, but let's just hold on to that nuance. And try to hold on to, okay, my feelings are here, but the way society acts is here, and, and this social system is here, right? The more we can do that and break out, I think the better. So Yeah, and I just to add to the, the, the final thought on what Zena was saying there is just a, um, from the trans femme perspective, yeah, hypervisibility is great. People get to tell me I'm pretty, they get to tell me all stuff. I also end up getting all of the hate comments. Yeah, this is absolutely the weirdness that Jess and I end up in. It just gets the obviously open hate and I get forgotten and signed and no one realizes that I'm here or they assume though, my gender is something else. So people are getting better about that. They Zena. are. Zena, they're getting better about it. The, 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 <laughs> the, 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 the transpho comments don't stop, but they're usually almost always at me. Yeah, um, we, we, I get other, I get it differently in that like people will like ask just for things and then not realize Xena's here. Yeah. Or then they see, oh, they don't realize that I'm having a bad chronic health day and then you know of course that gets silent you know overshadowed and they go ask just for things because they think that i you know might not talk or might not have the background that i do um you know and so like we got to be real just and i both have to be really careful not to fight with each other about this because that's not the thing happening we're both getting treatment but none of this is caused by either of us it's not Jess's fault or my fault that this stuff is happening. Like, if I could make things easier for Jess, I would. Like, I don't want her to have to wade through comments, you know, that are shitty. That's awful. And I know Jess doesn't want ever want me to be overshadowed or not have my voice heard. So. All I could think about is that meme from, like, event, the first Avengers movie where they're like, mm -hmm. you know, we have an army, well, I, we have a Hulk. <laughs> Except in my case, it's like, 
We have, tra- the, you know, we have transphobia. We have Than and Lil. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't see those comments because we have Thanagor and Lil. So, whatever. Um, point being is, this has gone on far too long, but we love you guys. We appreciate you. And just keep keep a watch out on the stuff and be aware of it. Cat did acknowledge stuff, okay? And Cat's all cool. All right? No, Cat there, is There was an us. oops, and, and it's I have no issues with Cat, okay? So no one needs to give Cat anything, all right? Cat's cool. Be nice to Cat. It was a slip mm-hmm. up. Yeah, moving on. Anyway, yep. we will see you guys in the next one. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Also, consider donating to us. You can support us on our website, transgirltherapist.org. You can also help us on our Patreon, link below, or you can become a member here on YouTube. Um, Thank you so much for watching.